there are plenty of different evaporator designs. So how do you choose between them? This is not the main focus of our course, but if you want a high grade, you should be able to give an example of an evaporator design and tell what is good with this design and why is it? Why does it look like this? So uh, one thing is the required concentration. Uh, and with that follows the boiling point, the viscosity, uh, and also the amount of water you need to evaporate. Uh, do you only need to evaporate a tiny amount or do you need to evaporate almost anything, everything? Um, and some uh, liquids uh, foam. Uh, and if you have foaming, then there is a risk for entrainment in Swedish medryckning. So tiny droplets follow the uh, vapor flux out and that's not good because then you get solids in your, in your uh, vapor flow. Uh, products might be heat sensitive. Uh, there might be fouling and crustaceans and scaling problems. Uh, we won't go into details about this, so we can just think of them as variants of essentially the same problem. You get stuff that gets stuck on the heat exchanger surface. And depending on exactly the characteristics of this, it might be called fouling, it might be called encrustations, or it might be called scaling. In this course, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's something like this. Something that gets stuck on or it's deposited on the heat exchanger surface, and that's bad. Uh, there are also material uh, considerations to take into account. Uh, and with the material comes issues like economy, heat conductivity, uh, the purity of material and also the purity of your product. Because if you have a high quality product uh, that needs to be very pure, and uh, if you then have a material that rusts or something, then that might have an impact on your product. So what kind of different evaporator equipment are there out there? Well, here are a few examples. Uh, we can divide them into one passage uh, evaporators, which is good because, uh, because it heats and cools the substance quickly. And therefore it's good for heat sensitive substances and multi-effect evaporators. And circulation evaporators, where the stuff circulates many times, uh, then you can get high internal flow rates and thus get a good heat transfer because of uh, the flow conditions, you get high Reynolds numbers, right? Uh, and th this is good for high viscosity and single unit evaporators. Now, why is uh, circulation then not good for heat sensitive substances? Well, uh, if things go around and around and around, there is a probability that a few molecules will stay there uh, for a long time. So you have a distribution of residence times in a circulation evaporator, uh, while in a one passage you uh, have a very narrow uh, distribution or almost the same uh, residence time for all molecules. Uh, and so you, you can get a long contact time in circulation uh, evaporators and thus risk for encrustations. You can think of that as deposits on, on the heat exchanger surface. So uh, you can have rising film evaporators. <coughs> this is common at pulp mills. And it's good for foaming liquids, but not for high viscosity liquids. So in a rising film evaporator, as the name in, implies, the liquid uh, feed comes in at the bottom and then the liquid rises up through the evaporator, creating gas and the gas and the liquid goes upwards. We have falling film evaporators, then you need to distribute the feed carefully into different uh, tubes so it, you, you spread them evenly and uh, so that you have film falling in all these tubes. This is uh, really good for heat sensitive products due to a short contact time and you can work with a small temperature difference between the feed side and the steam side. But it's difficult to distribute the liquid evenly and if you don't distribute the liquid evenly you may risk that some of these tubes become dry and then you can have uh, fouling and crustaceans and things like that. You have plate evaporators which are very similar to plate heat exchangers. You have thin film evaporators 
uh, which looks uh, it could look like a, an alpha laval separator where you separate cream and, and milk that that all kind of separator uh, we will look at uh, some pictures as well here is a schematic view of the rising film evaporator the feed coming in at the bottom and the steam coming in here coming out as condensate and the both the liquid and the, and the created vapor rises up here and comes into this dome-like thing here and goes into this phase separator uh, where the liquid is coming out. I mean, some of the liquid goes out already here, right? Um, so you have the liquid level some, somewhere and some of the liquid may follow the vapor but getting caught here and flowing back. So you get the thick liquor out here. A thin film, film evaporator, well, uh, I said it's like an alpha laval separator. Uh, you have this thing uh, spinning and on the inside here you pour in the liquid and uh, the liquid then, uh, this is a close up, so the liquid goes down like this and this, in, th this, is, uh, this is a two wall thing. So there is an inside and an outside and on the inside you have you let in steam and the steam condensates when it comes in contact with this surface here and then it releases the heat uh, to the liquid so the liquid boils and then you create a vapor that you can collect here and the condensate flows out here. You, you can combine this actually with uh, a cooler inside here so you get out uh, uh, the vapor condensed already. Here we have a falling film evaporator uh, with a preheater. So uh, the preheater here uh, actually rises, raises the liquid up and then uh, the liquid is distributed to different tubes and then falling down and then you go into the phase separator here. Here is a forest circul circulation uh, evaporator you get in the feed here and you have a pump here that pumps the, li the liquid uh, through uh, a heat exchanger so this is a tube and shower heat exchanger here and when it comes out here there's a deflector plate here and uh, so hopefully all the uh, the liquid will hit uh, this uh, uh, so it doesn't follow the vapor out and then you take out the some uh, as a concentrate here, but uh, you can let most of it actually go back for another round. Here is a scraped surface evaporator. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see maybe, uh, but in the center here is a cylinder with some tilted lamelles. And these tilted lamelles, and there are many design options I've just drawn one possible design uh, here uh, that were reasonable in uh, were reasonably simple to draw. Uh, these lamelles are designed such that they scrape against the inner surface of this cylinder out here. And the cylinder out here is uh, has two walls and you let in steam inside uh, and then it condenses and then you get out the condensate here. Now you put in the feed in the bottom here and then the feed, that's the brown thing here, uh, gets pushed up by these lamels uh, and it gets more and more concentrated and then you get vapor leaving here and then concentrate leaving up here. And uh, so a sur scraped surface evaporator is good when you have encrustations or, or things like that, that you get some kind of heavy fouling on, on the surface wall here uh, because these scrapes will remove that and push it away uh, so you get that in the concentrate instead.